couple of torturous days of riding the dirtiest, sandiest, windiest conditions. It's nice to be somewhere moist and warm. How is it? Paradise, you can't open your beer. Uh, Home spa. I think Patrick sent me either a text message or he might have called me actually and said you want to go to Baja with a bunch of people and go ride motorcycles and skateboard and I was like fuck that sounds amazing and dangerous yeah let's go I went on a trip with Heath before an alien trip I've seen Patrick around but I never traveled with him right as Patrick called me I was reading a newspaper. I think there was like three newspapers that I saw in the next three days. It all had like front page news about drug cartels in Mexico. And of course I read them all and I was just so freaked out. I was like, oh, this is what it's going to be like. It's going to be all about just craziness. I felt like whoever's going to come on the trip, they're going to be fucking badass and they're gonna fucking stick through it. And that's it, whoever shows up. It's my main mode of transportation. Like, I ride a motorcycle, like, it's A to B at this point. I don't really care where I go. I care who I go with, and as long as I'll be comfortable. Arto have been, like, on a four-day trip. I mean, he was on a tour, an alien trip with us for four days. And like we rode in separate cars, like I don't, I didn't really know Arto before this. They're people I respect, so the people I like like to know, and like it's good for these trips for the to like force me into that basically, like to get to know them, you know. I know that I'm old, and that like these trips are gone, so like I take them when I can get them. I think I just thought the more the better, and and anyone that's down, I feel like anyone that you tell like. Okay, we're gonna ride, how many miles was it? Like 2,000 miles or something? Through the desert? Like, anyone that's down to make, to do that should get to come because they're down to do that. <laughs> My real name's actually James David Herbert IV, but everybody calls me Jaime. Patrick sent me a text message that said we're going to Baja for a few days. He said two guys from Vancouver were coming. Harvey and Kai showed up, introduced myself, saw 
Harvey didn't have a front tooth, and I knew from that point on this was going to be pretty epic. <laughs> Most people I know without front teeth are pretty epic. And the truth of the trip, too. Kai told me about the Mexico trip, and I was like, there's like gang wars and killings and swine flu. Like, what? Why? Why would you want to put yourself through that? And he's like, Harvey, man, it's just the TV. Like, I'm going to do it. I was like, all right, I'll okay. Like, I'm with you on these trips. All it takes is someone to plan something out, and I usually jump on board. I got on the bike, I was empty. I was shit scared until we got 20 minutes away from the border. I loved it. Like, when we were riding into Tijuana, I think I was the only one that noticed that big ass Mexican flag. And I was like, we're doing this right now. We're entering their fucking territory. And then everyone's like, we're gonna like blast through, don't worry everyone. But the whole time I was like, I wanna just chill. There's all these Mexicans standing here. I've never been to Mexico. I, I've seen Mexicans in California, but then I just think they're like now Americans, right? So I was like, whoa, like they're just sitting on a fence. Why are they just sitting on, what? Are they gonna like try to make a run for the border? And everyone's like blasting ahead. And I was kind of like, well, there's someone behind me kind of going a little bit slower. So can I slow it down a little bit too? I like that first day though. I had a lot of fun. Just driving next to the wall, coming out of TJ through the border and cutting across to the beach. A lot of wind and a lot of sand in your face between trucks and cars and this and that. It's just like, <gasps> oh fuck. Like, and I, I, I don't know anything about Baja. Whatever, after we got through the first toll booth, it was just like, oh, it's gonna be good. Uh, I think my first time in Baja was 1984. Came down to help pit crew for a local racer, and that was sort of the crack the seal on the whole Baja thing. I've been coming down ever since. This was a different group than what I'm used to riding with because no one had ridden together as far as I know. Well, Canadians had ridden with Heath and what have you, but there wasn't a whole lot of experience riding together. One of the first things that I asked is it a bunch of spoiled brat kids? Because you're pretty much on your own and just have to be self-reliant. And there's not a whole lot of external help, you know? You can't really trust the police. You don't know whether to trust the army. And that's part of what I think makes me consider it sort of Wild West-like. You have to wear a helmet in Mexico? It depends. So like in Ensenada, you gotta wear your helmet or they're gonna pull you over. I've gone everywhere else on the peninsula without it and had no problem. So how are you going to prove that there's a helmet law or there's not a helmet law? I don't know, you know what I mean? We've done a bunch of racing down here, so we've been on a lot of the stuff that you can't pass in a regular car. Or some stuff you can, but you would just never go in a regular car to try to discover it because you don't know what you're getting into. Uh, the road to Cuatro's, I think, was a surprise to the guys. There wasn't a whole lot of information given to everybody before on what exactly to expect. I mean, we had that little informal breakfast, and I said a few things, and maybe somebody listened. I don't know. I had no idea what he said. And I don't even know if I mentioned the dirt road. We just turn off and I'm thinking it's like right there, like right off the highway the hotel was gonna be or the, the spot, but it was miles. Like you get over a hill thinking like, okay, it's gonna be right there. And then I remember seeing the ocean and nothing in any direction. 
And I remember seeing like way off in the distance some smoke and thinking like there's no way that's where we're going and it was. That was fun though, man. And it was kind of like, yeah, totally destination unknown. I liked pulling into that bowl and just being like, what, there's a, a scalable bowl here? Where are we? Is there electricity here? It's only day one of the trip. If it was like day nine and we were closer to San Diego, will you get that medevac thing out? <laughs> right? I like all the contrasts, man. Mexico's really laid back, wow. <laughs> and the beer's cheap, and the smokes are cheap, and there's no pretty girls anywhere, so I'm not getting in trouble with my, like, my woman. That's good. <laughs> he just wanted an excuse to hack shit up with a big knife. Toss it in. Mexico is fucking sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Found an old church that was kind of cool. Climbed around in it. And then came back later and blew it up. I don't know where anyone, where we got them from, but someone had a big bag of apple bombs and little uh, firecrackers, little bombs or whatever, and we just threw them in the little empty cement box out back. Is this Harvey with both hands? <laughs> <laughs> this is Harvey with ten fingers? Son of a bitch! I like the heads of the second push at it. Uno mas. Kind of a weird place for a uh, church. Huh? I used to know the name of the people that built it. The missionaries? Gringos. Really? I wonder if they just didn't notice there wasn't a town around. It's a long way to build a church. <laughs> the other town, six six and a half miles. If you need to get your tequila or anything. The dirt bike guy, I have no idea. That dude was a wing nut. Guaranteed. And everything was pioneered by off-road racers and surfers down here as far as good spots to go to. Everybody's running from something, whether it's running from you know, a 40 hour a week job or responsibilities or just tired of the rat race. And I think they come down here and just get turned on by the freedom and they want to come down and not pay a bunch of taxes and live somewhere where they can sort of do what they want and check out. I've been living here now for 30 years. Uh, back in 1980, I came down here with a lot of friends, come down here surfing all the time and I uh, ended up with an opportunity to buy a piece of property down here. I had a lot of friends in construction, so we 
nabbed a bunch of wood and stuff from the job sites and came down here, saved our money up, and I started building a little spot. And uh, that's how really Quattro Casas as a surf community started, because I was the first person to come out here and make it a place to live, you know. <laughs> Ever come to Mexico, don't worry, There's no danger out here. We're far away from all the city and all the trouble. This place is famous for its wave because it's real long and uh, we get that off south swell so when the Antarctic starts to go into its winter, drop it! <laughs> These guys are burning themselves. Careful Arto! Hi! <laughs> Hey, fire, fire it that way, because otherwise, if it, if it hits those solar panels, it's going to be problems. <laughs> That's oh, proper man. candy. <laughs> yeah. Just use that wood to fuck it. Burning wood, chopping fucking shit with an axe is fucking pretty awesome. A fire, to me, is like watching TV. I love fire. I like burning things down, and I think it's just in my blood, mostly, I think. Yeah, because he's like from Finland, and I was in Sweden before, and I know they're all like outdoorsy people. And then I heard like he had the nickname of oh, yeah, Norseman of the way. Woods or something. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Well, he was kind of like another guy that I'd seen in skate videos since I was really young. You know, all these pretty epic skate videos for years since I was a little kid. Yeah, well, he's a lot bigger in person, so he seems just kind of like a woodsman to me. Because like, I, I haven't really even seen him skate that much since we've been on the trip. What's your toe? <laughs> like as much as I love skating, I don't want to hear about it 24-7. So I think I get along better with like-minded people who like skating but don't want to talk about it, really. So it's been easy getting along with him. That's what she said. Ooh. Nine months later. <laughs> <laughs> you should throw it on. You did it. Yeah, yeah, it was it. team effort. The uh, honors okay. of Do it. Right. I just had the torch passed. When we got the Cuatro Casas, just that, whatever, San Diego to Cuatro Casas, what was that, 150 miles? It's like for those two days that we spent there, I couldn't even think about skating. My, like, my ass piece was so just mm, tense, because like, it's like, I can't get my legs moving. I haven't ridden a bike for a year before I came on this trip. group of skaters that come from San Diego, they all come down on their hogs. Yeah. Skateboards tied on the back. Hell yeah. <laughs> What's up with all his dogs? Yeah, everybody has a lot of dogs out here. You gotta have them, you know, to keep for protection. They don't live long. No. Not out here in the wild, nah, shit kills them. Other dogs, coyotes, raccoons, bobcats. They just get, yeah, they just disappear. I don't see them again. They all have disease names, even the cats. There's measles and their three kids, which is Valium, Vicodin, and Viagra, the three orange ones. And then there's Ebola and, um, God, what's your other, what's one that looks like her? I forget her name. Pneumonia, that's it, pneumonia. And then there's Ronchas. Ronchas means hives. I run out of names, I gotta think of new names, and I don't like to give the same name to, the, to an animal, so. Sexual diseases. <laughs> <laughs> Giving me new names. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have a good night and I'll see you in the morning. All right? All right, guys. I think people get psyched anytime they see like a pack of bikers I think they get in the middle of nowhere there. on like the long stretches of highways or whatever. Like people are just like. Oh, yeah, people are like, they're going somewhere, they're doing things. Like, they're like I mean, like, I see people looking at us, say, like, on the road. 
more like yeah I think when there's multiple of you yeah. you know yeah. there's like a pack yeah, like, well, well, I secretly you know you're curious. Yeah, I'm you're very, motorcycle I'm curious. very motorcycle curious. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know I, you just I, need to let I look yourself at, go. I look at motorcycles at the same time I masturbate. You know, I, I look. This is a whole thing. Whoa! You know, I, Whoa. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> you know, Let's I, go I, ahead and make sure you mark private, that section. It's private. You know, I'm like, <laughs> there is a camera here. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bromance. Tacos in quesadillas is gonna have a competitor pretty soon. A couple after a couple more of these. Squeeze or hop in the far back. I don't see a DVD player back here. A bud. We got pillows. We got smokes. Whoa! <laughs> oh. Braha ride, 2009. Oh. Okay. Oh God. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm walking. I'm walking. Oh, fuck. Fuck that. quieres toros? Oh, look at the barbecue machine. Royal mate, dude. Where's Harvey at? Here's the dentist. <laughs> dentista. Dentista de mentalista. I think that's gonna become the currency for the next four days. Food. Food and cigarettes is gonna be the most valid currency. So buy cigarettes even though I don't smoke. Yeah. <laughs> it's like prison. Um, it sounds like prison. Yeah. Are they? They're not vegetarian, are they? You eat fish, but Patrick. Oh, Patrick's vegetarian. Harvey's whatever. <laughs> How do you lose his tooth? Got punched. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty gnarly. <laughs> They uh, met up on one of the wild rides. They just like traveled cross country medicine in South Carolina, kept their distance for a couple of days, and then slowly came into the fold. And now they, they go on everything. We don't even do the wild ride anymore, and they still come out. I think it seems like we come as like a package because we're both Canadians, we're both friends, we both have Harleys. Not to say that like the pro skaters are gonna be wimpy or something, because they're not, but it's good to have like people that 
don't even have that kind of agenda or anything. They just want to like motorcycle and skate and hang out. And and Harvey, I mean, he works on like oil rigs and stuff. He works all winter on an oil rig, saving enough money to get to come on these trips. Like it's easy to kind of take this stuff for granted, but like for Harvey, this is like the highlight of his year. Like these trips aren't expensive to do. It's like, all right, I can work for like three, three or four weeks, if that, and I have enough money to go on this trip. I like to do whatever I want, whenever I want. I guess going where the road takes you. That's so cliche though. <laughs> It's gonna be nice to get back on some um, smooth pavement, actually. Just out on the open highway, just trying to get back on the open highway. We are here, basically. Camelou, El Rosario is where we were planning on trying to eat some lunch or dinner, okay. that's where Mama Espinosa's is. And then where we we're trying to stop is Catavina, okay. which is kind of the dead spot middle of this no man's land as we switch over from the Pacific side to Sia Cortez side. All right. There's not There's much that. out there, and if we end up riding El Rosario to Catavina in the dark, it's gonna suck. Yeah. I mean, it's just we recipe for disaster. Is Keegan chatting with anybody yet? Yeah. He was across the border like over an hour ago. Oh, he'll be here sometime. I knew he was gonna come. I just half expected him to be there, like at dawn, waiting for us when we got there. Where the fuck <laughs> is the Canadian? Well, you didn't hear from Keegan at all? No. That's the question of the day. I mean, we knew he'd be here between 12.30 and 1. That, I think that that's it. been said for a while. If you want to that, try and predict That's that. probably going to be the name of the trip. Well, have you, have you heard of Keegan he yet? <laughs> Canadian God. <laughs> <laughs> the Canadian God. Can you explain Keegan Soder what he means to a Canadian? Should I give him the? Should I give them what I actually think, or should I hold back? No, I can't hold back. No, I think he's the fucking raddest Canadian skateboarder ever. And I had to listen to like the guys who didn't know him, like, oh fuck, this guy's just gonna like show up and make us wait around, like, blah, whatever. And then sure enough, he comes blasting through the desert. Come on, man, that's how Canadians roll. I don't think I was fanning out, but in my head, I was fanning out. Because he knows I've always been fucking stoked on that. Like, I was down from like a young age. Like, I think I probably even asked him when I lived here, like, when I moved, like, where's Keegan? Like, Do you guys hang out with that guy? Like, I want to see that guy skate in person. Harvey. Hey, man. Harvey is El Diablo, and Kai is calm, cool, collected, and really pale and sensitive to mosquito bites. They're from the same town that I lived in, but I moved away and then met them later on going back to visit Victoria. And now that I like know him as a good person, I'm so 100% behind everything that he does. Like, I'll buy his board to throw on my wall probably, and I hope every other fucking Canadian kid does. Oh yeah, I hung up my uh, crown as Man-Am and became Man-Pro. Major turning point. The premiere was the 29th and everyone else left on the 27th, but it came pretty obvious that the Zero video had to take priority over anything happening, which is good, and now it's done. And this trip happened, so this is like a vacation after that. Good first day of riding until a lot of riding. Started in Encinitas, rode to Cuatro Casas, met you guys on the highway, and then I think rode the same distance again, like another 200 and something miles again with you guys, which was fine because it was really fun. You know, like a 350 mile ride, like pretty much sucks. And so it was cool to look over and see like Parto and see Keegan and everyone like still sight. I'm a motorcycle racing fan, so 
I like to pretend that I'm one, so I do like corners a lot. The long stretches have tons of turns, and you can just wipe out in any one of those turns. Some of them are just like racetracks, and if you can see two or three turns deep, it's fun, because you know what's coming or what's not coming, and you can just lay it down and just go as fast as you can possibly go. But the ones that are blind, which is the majority of them, there's just always a potential that somebody's going to be coming over that line and coming at you. Probably the most mentally difficult would just be the insanely long straight stretches and stuff like that where it doesn't actually seem like you're moving anywhere. You know, you could just be sitting on your bike staring ahead in a parking lot. Los niños es nada. Fuck man, Bob. Don't put big. that one in. Kind of forget animal. about it. But then you're like, what? A thousand miles long. <laughs> I seriously, I thought it was like. I thought it was 500 miles there and 500 miles back. Yeah, and, then you get and, and, they, and then we got to the hotel and they were like, no, the round trip's 2,500. You guys from Victoria? Yeah. The island, yeah? Yeah. That place is awesome, man. It's like a, it's like going back in time, kind of. No, you work construction? No. We, no. Work, we work around this boat that we live Dude, on. Dude, just say what you are. You're the captain. <laughs> a security a guard by trade. <laughs> 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 we live on a boat on a construction site and we get paid to do security patrols of the construction site at night. And pond skim. And skim the ponds. <laughs> Who watches the construction site when you guys are, aren't there? <laughs> well, Terrible. there's like, it's a pretty big place, so like, I, <laughs> I let His like- His name's Gerbil. Gerbil's watching it right now. Gerbil used the bear spray. <laughs> he, tra he got wasted and <laughs> went to spray it, and it's, he had the thing backwards, and it sprayed, and it went all down his hand, and then like, we went back in the house, and then he comes running out of his room naked, like running. He ran to the bathroom, <laughs> then like, <laughs> like ran to the shower, ran to the bathroom, ran to the shower, and I guess he had like gone to his room and tried to beat off and hadn't cleaned his hand, so he had bear spray all over his <laughs> hand. <laughs> oh my god! That is amazing. So then, I'll get to that washing off part later. <laughs> Gotta go wash <laughs> up. Oh no, a boner. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Only one way I know to get rid of those. Put <laughs> pepper spray on my cock. That's amazing. <laughs> You know, the old adage that we go by is, if you have a chance to top off, top off. And sometimes, just because you can make it 150 miles on a tank, you don't know if the gas station at the other end of that 100 miles is really going to be open or functioning, and we planned ahead for that. Buy gas off the locals. You know, I only see them every year or two or whatever, but they're pretty consistently there. It's probably the same guys. Probably has been forever. ¿Estás aquí todos los días? Las... Cinco y media de la mañana, las seis de la tarde. ¿Es un buen negocio o no? No, eh, nomás para comer. Sí. Muy poco, muy poco negocio. At first, when I actually heard that we had a guide, I was kind of like, oh, really? We have a guide? Like, I think it could be pretty easy, but it's actually been really good having those guys because they've done this before and you might run out of gas. I was trying to get it all from one guy but there's two dudes that are split in this territory, so okay. he doesn't want to cock block the other dude, so okay. he made it more complicated. So five, Where else are you going to buy gas? Right, so well, 560 pesos. Might be a lot of luck around here. Yeah. yeah. This might be the two only guys in there. 
I think we'd fucking be in some severe trouble or like somewhere in the gutter if it wasn't for Bill. I, don't know, I can't wait for your interview. It's like these fucking kooks, man. <laughs> these fucking monkeys. <laughs> Think they're riding bikes and shit. He seems like he has a pretty good tolerance. I know he gets fed up having to wait for everyone because we do so much waiting at gas stations. I'm just kind of driven. I want to get up early. I want to hit the road. I want to get my miles done. In case there's a problem, I want to be d working on it in the daylight. And so guys would kind of do their own thing, and some would want to go faster and some slower and that kind of thing, and it complicates the movement. Yeah, he doesn't like waiting. If we did the other ride, he'd be like, okay, get your gas. Okay, let's go. I like riding by myself. I like riding a motorcycle by myself. I like being completely alone and doing whatever I want. So like, I like to break off and be on my own. He definitely like, you know, has the kind of lone wolf kind of air about him. Just sitting off in the shade, like I've already got gas. I was here a half hour ago. I'm ready. He doesn't care if he rides. 500 miles a day, I don't think he would just do it. Like, honestly, if it, if it was just me and Heath on this trip, or if it was just Heath, like, turns where we went into, like, San Ignacio, like, that wouldn't happen. I mean, it gets from okay to epic as you slowly get down you know, closer to the, to the bottom. This is the closest thing to an oasis I think I've ever seen, except for pictures of them in National Geographic. It only lasts for a few miles and then it's gone. It's a pretty awesome little spot. True Baja, to me, really starts in San Ignacio. It just feels like authentic Baja. There's hand-painted signs and things that look exactly like they looked when I saw them 20 years ago, and they probably look exactly like they looked 50 years ago. At the end of September, I just put two small fractures near the toes. Skating makes it sore, and we're doing too many donuts on the motorcycle. So, doctor said just keep trying to not do anything that makes it hurt, and it'll get better. Have you ever seen Keith skate in person, skateboarder? I'm sure I have at some point in person. Oh. Wait, okay, we're gonna go way back to 1994 when Foundation did a demo in my hometown, Nelson, BC. Saw him skate then. He was probably 15. He's sick. It's Heath Kirchart. Arto is just. It's actually kind of a similar vibe to like friends from Canada and Australia that I've been on motorcycle trips with. You know, the kind of like get in the water kind of attitude. It's like go for it. Just trying to get as epic as possible at all times. I don't think we've ever ruined a more ancient skate spot, which is kind of awesome.
local church. Let's go have a look inside, see what they got. Are you religious? Not so much. The ceilings look pretty cool. Must have been so hard to build. Sex with a go, lot of hookers. Go on, my child. And did go tons on. of blow. Oh, it's all right. Jesus forgives you. Thank God. For, for such things. How much was the coke? Ah, uh, I forget. The hooker was expensive, though. You probably got ripped off. Holy Just sweet. don't do it again. All right. Hail Mary, full of grace. <laughs> Hail Mary. Amen. <laughs> Jesus likes money. <laughs> <laughs> it's in every corner of this place. Bueno. Sí, bueno. Sí, se alcanza hasta acá. Ande. You see those kids dressed up? There's going to be a party up here in a couple hours and we'll be able to party with the locals. San Ignacio was like the first legitimate camp spot. And we showed up and it was just this dirt. <laughs> I don't know. Just this dirt lot. I know it looks a little bit unepic, <laughs> <laughs> if I must say. Hey, right, make your bed. This doesn't Oop. look like it. Campground. Dude, there was a massive hurricane here in August. Right. They All are this has been flooded. You're welcome to explore. This is what there is. I mean, I went to the other campground that he had picked originally. There's no way to even get into it. It's just palm trees and sand and rocks and stuff, you know? So this is kind of where we're at. Are those vultures or just birds? <laughs> Did you have any fun in town that night? Yeah, it was pretty fun. Like, it was Halloween proper, I guess. <laughs> and all the kids were out trick or treating. Man, that kid's cool. He's a kitty. <laughs> Little kitty. How about these guys? Do we have some zombies? Sí. Zombies. They're in Michael Jackson, in Thriller. They're my idol. I love you! Donde esta el party? Donde es la fiesta? Donde esta la fiesta? No hay. No hay. No. No hay. No hay. What? What'd she say? Can you say? Hola! Adios! Adios! It's kind of party, man. How hard is it to party? There's kind of a weird scene in the town square. There's like all these old guys sitting in these line of chairs watching like a boxing match on TV. Oh, there's boxing right here. And then like 20 feet to the left of them were all of their kids. 
beating the shit out of each other with boxing gloves on. Hola, como esta usted? Juan Carlos. Oh, you think he's badass? Yeah. Me he's got pipes in his muscles. Like when I saw that, I was like, oh, we need to like get involved in this. We need to be like become a part of it. Look how exciting this is. We haven't seen any young people this entire trip. Look at this. Turns out you just got a box. Any box of those? When I was there, like I was like, I want to be like in this. Like I was like, I, I want a box, but I don't want to be the guy that's like, I want a box. But like they just kind of like put the gloves on me. I just don't want to fight that one guy. No, Carlos. No. Too late. Too late. Too late. Who am I getting? Is he making fun of me? You got me. <laughs> what happened to your finger? No, but you hit me in the nose. Oh, wait. Oh. He kicked the shit out of Carlos. Do you guys remember when he was telling me to fight the kid after? I was like, what? No, dude. I'll actually get beat up. There's going to be like all these kids beating us up. You've got to go out and do stuff. Of course I've had fun. I have fun everywhere, man. Every single spot we went to, like, there's something to remember. Like when my bike broke down. The roughest moments you remember a lot. Well, at least my fucking bike broke down on the Baja and not in Victoria. The day before, though, I knew my bike was running, running hard. I need that wrench, it's too loose. We rode for half an hour. People started passing me because I wanted to slow down and just enjoy it. So I got all that out of me and fucking the Canadians are behind me, Kai and Keegan. He pulls up beside me and I was smoking, man, I was smoking. I don't know, he was ahead of us and we pulled over and there's just oil everywhere. He was leaking oil last night and then it just looked like it blew up today. A man's always got to push his bike. That's sick, hey? That was dope. I don't know, I wanted to push my bike. I got a moment with it right now. And he knows I don't have many possessions in life except for my motorcycle. And he like makes fun of me for being a free spirit. Yeah, I'll go whatever, do whatever. But like, I'm gonna sound like a total typical Harley Davidson dude, but my bike is my life. Like when my bike broke down, Keegan handed me the machete. All right, cool. Like, yeah, it's not like, wow, all my anger and all my shit is gone. But it was like, whatever, make the best of the situation. I like the way this guy thinks. Got my fucking captain right there, like with me. So that, like, actually that, I like that, that you were there a lot. I was really fucking stoked. I don't know if that's like a teary moment or something for people who don't know me and this guy, but we kind of do a lot of shit together. So when it broke down, I was like, who else would I want to be beside me other than the guy I'd go across the country with? Good ride with you, Ari. get to do 
do this trip like I did the trip a different way. That's like all I think about in the truck is like, oh man, I hope we pull over somewhere where, this, where they need gas and we can skate something. sucks too because there was like professional skateboarders there and I couldn't do it when they could have done like a really good trick. Ah! Keith and Keegan placed a bet whether I do it or not. He said no one could do it. Keegan said I could do it. So then, that, that, then when I heard about that too, I was like, I'm letting Canada down. Because like we're used to stupid spots that are really fucking stupid to skate and we have to work to skate them. So I was kind of like, fuck, I blew it there. But I don't have patience for things like that. I don't have patience at all. If I didn't, if I didn't do it in 10 tries, I was over it. For an ollie, no way. It was hot. That's my excuse. <laughs> no, I'm over this. But, I don't know, I think the next two days are gonna be a lot of fun. I can like even feel it in the group too, because... <laughs> I don't know, I think it's been hard on them riding a lot in hot weather, bugs, windy roads. But I think the next few days are going to be a lot of fun. Which is good to think about too. When we were coming out of Mulahay, it's about 15 miles south, and we rounded a corner up on a hill and looking down onto that bay. I think everybody's stoke meter just went through the roof, you know. And every, that's what everybody expects from Baja. You want to see some crystal clear water, you want to see a big white beach and hardly anybody there. And we rode down there and stripped off our clothes and ran out in the water in our underwear. I think that was an epic point of the trip, it was just fun. Sorry about it, floating in paradise with a beer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I rode a motorcycle. That was insane. That was like a postcard. Fuck, man. This is kind of why, you know, this is what I signed up for. I honestly can't think of one high point, like, just kind of blends in. The whole thing is pretty magical, just the fact that we're all doing this, you know, like, and the whole thing is just amazing. This is like, this is living right here. This is how it should be. I know one day it's going to end, so I'm definitely trying to take full advantage of it and just appreciate the hell out of it right now. Kai is super awesome, obviously, because he let us stay at his house. You're <laughs> blowing it with that answer. What are you talking about? Kai is sick because we can stay at his place. What are you... <laughs> Bro, if you guys rolled... <laughs> <laughs> if you guys rolled into my That's parents' town, the worst town, answer I've ever heard. Ever. My parents would never bad. let that you stay at house. That was bad. Cut. Kai is pretty sick. <laughs> Kai stay at his house. <laughs> Kai, you know what I mean, right? This is Kai. What if I didn't let you stay at the house? I would still be grateful for your company because I think you're an awesome guy. <laughs> okay. A little twist, eh, Patrick? <laughs> Kai, you can stay at my house anytime you want. The whole kit. <laughs> <laughs> My parents and my little brother moved to Loretto a few years ago. I think for me, like, it's the perfect mix of Mexico. Like, it's, tu it's just touristy enough for me where they're like, most of the people in the shops speak enough English where you can get by not speaking any Spanish. And it's like a well-kept city. It's very, like, quaint. I love the landscape down here and, like, I love the culture. I like how kind of laid back and it is and like their common like disregard for time and like the whole way that westerners live their life so loretto's kind of like the perfect mix like southern baja still mexican but still enough like tourist amenities to keep a westerner happy ready yep okay let's wait i'm Bruce. Chris? Hey, uh, 
Oh, what does your brother do? He's now a scuba diving instructor. So he's traveling a lot too. He's living in Singapore. Now he's living in Mexico. It's gonna be bad. I got birds spread out. Hey Keegan, we need a hero shot for the video. So they're about uh, 600 pounds or so, and uh, they uh, get a little bit noisy. Uh, we'll be pretty close to them in the water. Uh, shouldn't be afraid. Uh, they're curious. They're kind of used to people being around them. One of those spiny things? Spiky, spiny, spiny. <laughs> you can you can touch them like they're not. I have no interest in what's going on under the water. And just the feeling of breathing underwater freaks the hell out of me. <laughs> and I don't care to look at the fish down there. Toys and see these weird alien looking fish. Nothing about that it excites me too much. Yeah, it's got like worms crawling out of it over here. That's called a brittle star. Touch the middle part of him, it's all like soft. Oh, I see, I see. You can feel him like sucking on your hand, the middle part. Well, I can tell already after seeing all of you in the water that none of you are going to sink because you have a positive attitude and a buoyant personality. That's what you want, yeah, that's the ideal situation. Good luck getting in. <laughs> Come on, have another cigarette. Kick, kick, kick. <laughs> and your impression at this time. <laughs> Um, sweet.
sweating like a baked ham. Mm -hmm. All right. Was it you that was asking for a temperature increase? Yeah, I was asking for a temperature increase. <laughs> now, I would like a temperature decrease. Just maybe five, five or six degrees. Blown a fuse. I have a brake light, but I don't have running lights or a headlight. It kind of sucked driving at night with no headlight and sunglasses on. I couldn't be bothered putting the goggles on because they don't fit without a helmet. So I had to just follow these guys, just try to stay as close as possible to make sure that I see where the road is. <laughs> Banana, V8, coffee. That's delicious. about the mileage so far like it's been fine it's been fun riding I mean that's been the most one of the most enjoyable parts of the trip is just fucking just hauling ass and just going and definitely feel like a, a free motorcycle renegade riding down the two-lane highway going however fast the bike can handle and just cruise, cruising around I'm not here in the world you know what, man? Like, I kind of think Victoria and Mexico are kind of alike. Mexico is really laid back, and there's always characters everywhere, but approachable characters. That one place we stopped at, and the sportsters ran out of gas, and there's this lady living in the middle of nowhere. And she's like, got a cell phone, and she's standing on the highway waiting for a ride. And then like, probably like fucking 70 miles down the road, it's like the biggest city for like smaller city Mexico. Any motorcycle trip I've ever been on in the past. Yeah, usually I go on trips in the summer and it's really hot and we're probably not showering. And even if I, I'll go on a trip and it's freezing, it just became a thing with me and my friends. It's like, have to go swimming no matter what, like get in the water. It just became this thing, it's like not an option. You know? That's why we came here for, is for the golden hour. From the dusty dust bowl, this is a little different, a little different scenario. Stay here any day. How did we get from up here to down here in what, six days? Five Pretty days? easy, we just didn't stop and look at anything. 
<laughs> we just rode. We just drove 95 miles per hour. <laughs> it's gonna be a sad moment once we start going up. There's no more left. No more party. The football season's over. No more games. That's it. Yeah, it's kind of lame. More importantly, should we go try to find some fish tacos? Yeah. <laughs> It's the day of the crooked eyes after the day of the dead. That was a good kick in the nuts. I know not to do that again. Are we going to Cabo today? I think so, yeah. Holy shit, yeah. Hell yeah. Cabo's not in the itinerary, but we're trying to stretch it and make it all the way to the if <laughs> possible. The route says, how much longer do you think the loop is? 
it says that it's 100 to Cabo. So we would come down that. That looks so pinnacle through there though, that road. I just go straight. Or we can go to what Chris was saying was, let's just go to Pescadero, set up so everybody knows where we're at, what everything and is, then we'll and then just up. ride down to, to Cabo. It's, it's supposed to be like And then we can drive up on the way up, we yeah, can you go can there. Do, Whatever you want, and then yeah, everybody knows. That, that everybody knows fine. where the base camp is, yeah. and you can do things at your own pace. All right, so straight you can down. Just sit there and keep driving in circles if you want. Right, you can go up <laughs> Sierra La Laguna if you like. We're just cutting oh, right I across see, the right. peninsula again. How long will that take? All day. Really? All yeah. fucking day, bro. Mm -hmm. Seven days of motorcycle riding. It'll take as much as we've got. And we're still alive. <laughs> It'll be pinnacle. My ass is dumb, but my mind is strong. <laughs> I was really excited to go to part of Baja that I hadn't seen. I'd seen Cabo from a boat, and I'd been as far as La Paz before, but I'd never been in that stretch in between. You know, sometimes you have to pay attention to the riding so much that you, for, that you forget to stop and smell the roses, so, so to speak. I really enjoyed it. Pescara was fun. You could retire there fairly peacefully by yourself, I reckon. I think the place is named after fish. El Pescadero means El the fish. Fisheria? Fisheria. What's Black Bart's mean in Spanish? Black Bart? What was that place we were at last night? Black Horses. What? What was it called? Lord Blacks. Lord Blacks. Take me to your biggest skate park. Take me to your biggest whatever it is to skate. Right now. The pescado in my stomach wants to roll around. An NFL guy paid for this. Play for the Chargers and the Colts that never skated. Yeah. Just thought the town needed it. That's the story, right? Yeah. Oh, there's no way. Looked pretty fucking insane. Looked like the, whoever built it were pretty fucking amped and P Margaritas deep when they started digging that and obviously digging more and then pouring concrete on it and then even building it on top of the concrete, coping fucking semi lobbing down on it. And it looked awesome, it was just fucking full of water and couldn't skate it. What are you doing? I'm doing a test run! You got it. Got it. Fuck you. Want some help? I definitely got some kind of fucking disease out of this shit. I had fun skating that part. And like, we didn't do like rad tricks because of the situation, but I don't know, I had fun. I could have been the worst skate park. It could have been made in that. What is this? How about a helmet? <laughs> <laughs> when life sucks, you ride the helmet. <laughs> Take a poo now. Because 
obviously, no one. No, no one skates sleeveless anymore. No one brought toilet paper to the session, so. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta uh, come up with some. Oh. Please film that. So remote, man. Yeah, yeah, I think it was when I figured out that there was a full moon and that the rental hut, although nice, was concrete. And then I found out that the beach was a half a mile away and you can camp on it for free. So that pretty much sealed the deal. I just was going to go down there no matter what, even if it was alone, and then everyone seemed to get stoked on it. Grab a seat, fellas. I found two gods on this trip. The god of fire and the god of margarita. Oh. Hey, fucking man. Tell us a story. <laughs> Childhood story. Tell me a story. Oh, how old were you when you lost your virginity? You lost your virginity. Wait, how old were you, Harvey? 19? No, I was 17. 18. 19 too? Yeah, that story. Arto, what about you? When I was at 17, I thought like everyone. Viking Lord? Yeah. 15. <laughs> I think. Wow, I could see boning at that age, but I just never had like the balls to do that. I mean, I was. I don't think I could have pulled it off. I, was like, I didn't know at all what I was doing. It was just like get up, oh. <laughs> do pumps. Oh, oh no, no. What happened? It's pretty rad that we're at an amazing beach, full moon, and we're just talking about dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dicks. <laughs> Were you sponsored when you went to Munster when you were a kid? Uh, I got I got boards from like this local shop and stuff back home. What year was that? Ninety-eight, I think. Summer, summer ninety-eight. Wasn't your hair straight back then? No, I mean, it's always been pretty fucked. <laughs> I had a I had a Zoo York cap on the whole time. Zoo York. A Zoo York. I'll never forget that gapped front board over the pyramid. I either got second or third, I can't remember. I think it was me, Chris Sen, and BA. But BA won it. kind of weird a little bit. It was like us three. You must have been pretty stoked. That's a solid entrance. Do you get health insurance? Beat people up. Um, I pay for it. Canadian. Yeah, but I'm still. Oh, in the US though. Because I live here now, so. I just got mine a couple months ago. I guess I turn into a pussy head. We can't talk about stuff like that. We're rebels. <laughs> <laughs> we were filming for the flip video right early on when I got on. My in, my travel insurance ran out. That wasn't even I wasn't even living in the states at the time. I knocked myself out in San Diego, trying to warm up on this rail. Knocked myself out. Is that the one where he puked? Yeah, yeah that that's he that's up? the cartoon out of yeah. Oh, that was fucking gnarly. That's the first one, and then two months later, I go to Vancouver, Slam City Jam. Knock myself out in the contest. Mike Vallely starts to riot. <laughs> so, someone steps on my hand or kicks it or whatever, and fucking... I wake up at the hospital and my finger is pointed that way. Ugh. My little finger is like that. So there's... Get some beers! That's what they're doing. Get couple. <laughs> Get couple. <laughs> like you start using less and less words in your speech. Later on, as Reggie takes over, beers, couple. Oh, that one's like no. <laughs> Get. So Warrior, need drink. Oh, yeah, I, I was waiting for that. Eventually, at the end of this trip, it's just gonna be grunts. Like, uh, That's what uh, uh, it looks like. <laughs> uh, 
that means let's go. Or I gotta get no. gas. Woke up at, at dawn. Woke up every hour, really, through the night. This is camping sleep. You look at Keegan, and Keegan is just like, I think the freest one on the trip. Like, Keegan would be out here camping on the beach by himself. Keegan is like the most adventurous one of the group. I just need to uh, do something physical, like, you know, like I have to feel drained <laughs> somehow, like physically drained. So, so that day at the beach, the owner of the surf camp showed up with boards, surfed all day, and I just figured we've been riding for six days and we're definitely going to do that again. So if this is my one chance to do something completely the opposite of being on a motorcycle, this is it. out there surfing with people and they're like telling him their life stories. That would never happen to me. There's like a spot where like 20 surfers are and Keegan will be in that mixing it up. I don't want to be in that mix. I don't want to fight a surfer because I, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I've been skating for 20 years. Do you think if I stood on a surfboard I'd look okay if I'm just stiff? I'm the type of person that when I look back on shit, I love it. But when I'm experiencing it, when I'm in it, I'm just kind of like, all right, just get through it. Just sitting there with this fucking ball and chain trying to get out there. <laughs> I just painted way too dark a picture of myself. That's not how I see it. I like, I enjoy this. I think this is the best city so far. There's a beach, it's free to stay on, people surfing, and just like, it's like beautiful girls on the beach here. There's a bar right there. I definitely stay longer. Reggie! Aloha! Mahalo! Get pasa tío, huh? So what's up, bruh? Bitching. It was two to four, south swell, peeling like a mango, so I had to get out there. <laughs> yeah, we had a high five moment. We shrouded the gnar out there. You did. We. It was one of the funnest nights of the trip. Funnest nights followed by one of the funnest days, so that whole thing was like so worthwhile. I felt funny after because I was like, man, I was laughing and having such a good time. I probably got the worst laugh ever. Like those guys are probably so sick of me laughing right now because I was having a good time. In this trip, everyone brought something to, something to the table. Everyone did. I don't think anybody lacked in any area. I think collectively, it's an awesome group of people and if one person was missing, it wouldn't be the same. I imagine that we'll all be friends or acquaintances for life at this point, depending who talks to me after I'm done with this interview. It's a bummer cause that it's coming to the end because everyone's seeming to really like meld together nicely. Sad to see the trip done because it's pretty awesome, but pretty psyched to go home. It's both, both things. Like the end of the road looks pretty good, but at the same time, it's, it's the end of something. Now that we're going back, I'm kind of like, whoa, it'd be kind of sick to stay longer now. I don't mind staying longer. 
you've reached the end. So coming back was definitely weird, just because you knew that the trip was coming, not to an end because it still had fuck who knows how many more days till we get back. And that was like the first point of the trip that it was like we're on our way back home. You excited to go back, Bill? Yes. What do you look forward to? <laughs> as as uh, Arto would say, we have hit the apex. Uh, on our way home, we achieved the pinnacle. I don't know. As soon as you reach the apex and you're going back the same route, it's just kind of like, let's just, let's just fucking go. <laughs> now, now it's just like, all right. The relationship is in a slump. Yeah. Everyone's sick of each other. Everyone's heard all everyone's stories. We need to figure out how to make it a little bit more romantic. <laughs> we're going up, we're going up north. guys, I think, are generally pretty alert at first, and then they have a day or two of success and start going faster and getting a little crazier and having a little fun, and that Wild West part kicks in and guys are like, I can do what I want, I can take my helmet off, and then I think that's when you start getting in trouble. So we were leaving the old mill in San Catine really our last day here before we head to the border on the way to Ensenada. And I was rolling up and I could see something up in the distance and I thought, oh, it's one of those guys stopped for a smoke, whatever. And then I realized it's a bike lane on its side and a guy's just sitting on it. And I thought, oh crap, this is not good. At least he's not laying out in the road. You know, he's sitting up, which means he's alert and uh, can't, be, can't be dead if he's sitting up on his bike because the way the, the bike looked was shocking. You know, you don't see a, a Harley turned on its side without some damage to man and machine. You know, had that been a day when somebody was wearing skate shoes and a t-shirt, it would have been a lot worse. If I hadn't have been wearing that helmet, I might be dead. Protect your grape. I took it off forever. And yesterday I did that skid and then Harvey's like, you should wear a helmet. So I was like, okay, taking Harvey's advice. It was like, I was tumbling. The like tank slappers, you know, the handlebars, are, it's just like build up more and more and then it's, <laughs> I could feel that helmet hitting, like, <laughs> I could feel it hitting rocks and stuff too. That would have like split my head open. Maybe I'll slow down now. <laughs> That's the moral. All right. All right, hold on. There you go. We're stretching now. Hell yeah. All right, we're good. Look at this stuff, the holes. 
could be like gouges in your ribs. There was a fucking machete sticking off the back of the The machete! Yeah. What if it had landed on me? I thought of that so many times, like, dude, there's a machete right yeah, here I said sticking that to up. You. I said that to you too. I was like, dude, are you sure that's safe? And you're like, oh yeah, it's totally fine. Like, all this shit happens, and you have like. I don't know how the fuck I got you're gonna away be with sore. This. I like, got away with it. No road rash, no like. Oh yeah, rib cage. I don't know what That would have been, been, been all on top of your head. <laughs> I, w I could have just been dead. That would have fucking blown. Because you did the. You rode through it. You rode through it too? I'm psyched on you guys for doing that. That's a good ride. I did it too. I'll go on a motorcycle trip to anywhere, Tierra del Fuego. Did I say it right? Tierra del Fuego. The tip of fire. Alaska is one place I want to go, and fucking tip of fire is one place I want to go. If you can combine them two, it will be most apex. Or start from the bottom, fuck who knows, go all the way up and then take the bearing straight across to Russia, take the road of bones, Mongolia, side by side Siberian Express, or even ride on the tracks, go the Scando. Go up Norway, all the way down to Morocco, the southern tip of Africa. Retire in Australia. Jesus. <laughs> what what you just said out. there was... You're like, a real go-getter. Fucking <laughs> go-getter done. <laughs> While you're at it. <laughs> so what's going on with these beers anyway? It's like, as Im it's as important as feel at this point of the trip. It's, it's, this is very important.